Hey everybody, it's Triple L coming in to talk about Mahoka Season 2, Episode 7, I think. I think I think that's it. Uh, I apologize if I get the number wrong here, but hey, hey everyone. So, this week's episode of Mahoka will do top moments and a proper review, but I gotta say, like, for this episode, and especially in consideration with the previous episode, I am just... Well, surprised! I didn't think that we were actually going to get something of a relatively high quality when it came to the uh, the pacing of the episode. When I look at this episode, I do sincerely feel that this is the kind of pacing that I would have rathered for the majority of the series. Because this just felt so focused, it felt so coherent, it felt like I, I didn't feel like there was anything that I was questioning at the end of the episode. Even when we go into the, fi the fast-paced part of the episode uh, with the fight with Lena and all that, I, it felt good, right where Tatsuya had met with Lena after she fired off her magic at, in the streets. At that point, I was like, oh my god, I really hope the episode doesn't end here because I want to see more. And to my surprise, there was still a lot of the episodes still left to go, um, which is just, you know, Mahoka kind of trained me to expect a certain thing when we were doing that kind of fast-paced shenanigans but by the end of the episode i'm feeling like oh my god yeah we're getting so much information and it's coherent i'm not i don't have any questions i love this week's episode of mahoka especially with last week's episode i think the, these two things they go well together i'm enjoying it i think five six and seven they've built into each other really well five it's probably still a little bit more disconnected from six and seven but six and seven build into each other well enough that uh, i feel good about it and the reason i'm bringing up six is because there's a point from six that i'm going to bring up here at the end uh, but just in general overview i think this is a strong episode I wish that Mahoka could do this level of quality for the rest of the series. And just to like really quantify that, when you look at that first scene in Mahoka with, uh, what's the name, Pixie? You look up for how long that scene lasts. And then think about how often we had to be jumping around in the previous episodes. And you'll see why this episode feels so much stronger. Anyway, let's get into the top moments for this episode. Beginning with the first one. Pixie's mad search in the high school databases. So when I saw her search in there, you know, it was a sense of wonder, a sense of mystery, because it's like, oh my god, wh what's the parasite looking for, right? I was going into this blind. So I like this because it established what Pixie was about to become. So when that Tatsuya reveal happens later on, it's like, oh, okay, I get you. At first, I was thinking, is she looking for Hanoka? Because like she's the one that triggered her, right? So I was thinking that made sense. But I liked it. I, I liked what was going on and I loved how the minor characters characterized it. And also, thank God we had minor characters showing up once more. I loved having the minor characters there. But yeah, I liked how they characterized her with looking excited. It really made it feel a lot more creepy. So that was well executed. Uh, next top moment, Miyuki's overreaction and subsequent put down like the ignorant child she is. So you guys know, you guys know I'm not into Miyuki. I'm not into her uh, stalker qualities. Miyuki's a stalker in any other context she would have stalker like tendencies. So I love in this one where she overreacts about the whole... Um, about Pixie jumping on Tatsuya and then quickly gets put down because Tatsuya doesn't play around. He knows what he's doing. He's not some lucky pervert. He's not a pervert, I think, in any which way. Um, so I just like seeing her and Honoka also just simmer down a bit. It was it was a nice put down. Next top moment, uh, Shibata finding the parasite. So I have this as a top moment because one, it's cool to have minor characters or the side characters doing something worthwhile. But there is a note on writing here specifically that, you know, Tatsuya is talking about how they had such a big blunder in episode 5, right? And I look at this episode and I see the reason why. It's because Tatsuya and his group are careless. I see no reason when you have someone like Tatsuya who comes from a military background, I see no reason to justify why you would not go and do a perimeter sweep knowing that you have one of the greatest sensors for parasites in the area. That parasite was inside of Pixie the entire time. I legitimately do hope in universe that Tatsuya goes in his head and thinks, oh, we should have done a perimeter sweep. I don't know if he thinks that. I don't know if the author even fathomed that because um, I'm going to talk about this later, but I think that the author does have a little bit of a blind spot here when it comes to creating um, a high school setting because I think that's affecting Lena in a, in a very particular way. We'll discuss that in a little bit, but 
I do want to just say that if Tatsuya in the future has a big issue and he's going to call it a blunder, it's because he's careless. It's because this kind of thing, this is careless. To not do a perimeter sweep after you had someone essentially invade your school, that doesn't make sense in the context that Tatsuya is this military pro. And again, when you're making mistakes like this, it's easier to say you deserve to have a penalty for being so careless kind of thing. Of course, this is all on the positive side. It's just because uh, Tatsuya last time quantified something as a failure. I just want to point out how often they fail in that regard. Um, because it's not fair to call it a failure only when it's convenient to call it a failure, not call it a failure every other time you fail. Um, my next top moment was the parasite being imprinted on Honoka. I just thought this was a really unique um, mechanic. I, I, I was interested. I like the idea that she imprinted the uh, parasite. Um, I also like to talk about what Sasya said about uh, this thing having an ego but living so passively. I think that was a very interesting detail and that carries on to my next top moment. Uh, the parasite's very sorry, the parasite's very unique form of memory. Essentially, from what I understood, they can only learn stuff that you could learn in a book. Uh, but anything having to do with what the host wants or what the host dreams or their habits is barred off from the parasite. So I think this is really convenient for the plot for the reasons that Tatsuya said out loud. You know, they don't know how many people have died because of it. And you know, even and when it comes to being convenient for the plot, the the real good thing here is how you can justify why this is the case. Because like right off the top of my head, I could say like, okay, you know, if the whole sorry, if the parasite remembers the host, then you know, is that going to stop it from having a personality disorder, or is there going to be information overload? When you see the way that the parasite has been modified because of Honoka. That's a really deep level of imprintation. So, and I don't know if that's a word, apologies. But that's a very deep level of an imprint. And if that's the case, saying that, oh yeah, otherwise this parasite would have personality disorders and, and probably kill itself in insanity. That makes sense to me. That really does make sense to me. I think that's a pretty, I think it's a convenient mechanism for the plot. But I think in the perspective of an organism that wants to survive, I think that's a pretty cool thing. I think, uh, I really do think Mahoka did a really nice, uh, sorry, a really neat implementation on that one. Moving on, my next top moment. This was the second best moment in the entire episode. It's pretty much everything with Honoka in there. Honoka's reaction to pretty much having her feelings just blurted out loud by this thing that she imprinted on. I think that was great. I loved it. It was the most fun part of the episode aside from another moment. Ah, definitely for that scene, I loved it. I think that was really good. I, I wish we could get more of this because that was just, that was great. Now we move into my next top moment, the parasites being influenced by their hosts and Tatsuya saying that hits close to home. So before I continue with the big thing that I, I, I take away from the parasite part, I want to say that Tatsuya saying hits close to home. Thank you, anime. This is what we need. I do not want Tatsuya summing things up at the end of arcs or at the end of a volume. Give me some idea of his mental process on the way there. The moment that you have Tatsuya finding commonality with a parasite, how much does that say about the character? Immediately, I felt for the guy. He's he's talking about having wishes imparted on you by someone who's higher up in you or someone who allows you to live. Yes, I get it. He has wishes imparted on him by the responsibilities of the Yotsuba or whatever. I get it. I understand why that hit close to home. Seeing Tatsuya actually identify with something and saying it out loud is significantly stronger than Miyuki giving us the summary of what Tatsuya has learned. That was excellent. This is the kind of stuff that I want to see more, especially with Tatsuya, who has a really hard to read face. That gave me such an excellent view into his character that I really cannot understate how great of a line that was. I wish that was the standard as opposed to the highlight for the series. Now there is something else in that moment though. So it's specifically with the parasites being influenced by their hosts. So the reason this is big for me is because in previous episodes we were told that the parasites were the ones modifying behavior. And that might still be kind of correct but now when you look at the way this thing is interacting with Honoka, it really does seem like the parasites are only acting in accordance to their host innermost desire. In other words, if a host has this one thing they want to do, the parasite sees it, most likely gets the imprint on that, and then bolsters it and then pursues that particular thought. When you look at the way Pixie is pursuing uh, Tatsuya, we could definitely say there's desire amplification. 
um, which I think is a really interesting mechanic given that before this, the Parasites seemed like they were much more uh, malignant. Next top moment was Tatsuya getting the jump on everyone that was coming to hunt him down in his fight against the mooks. It was just cool and we got a lot of really cool details like the US was using modified humans which built into another moment with Lina later. I liked seeing the action and plot details and world building details built in. Um, I think that was another I think that was another great execution on the scene. Uh, then my next thought moment, Tatsuya versus Lina and Tatsuya's absolute put down of Lina. It was so good. I enjoyed seeing it. I enjoyed seeing uh, the interesting choreography. I enjoyed seeing Tatsuya losing an arm. I enjoyed seeing his like I enjoyed the entire maneuver. I enjoyed uh, Bryonac, whatever that was called. I think this was good. I'm all for it. Next up, next top moment was Tatsuya calling out the human modification when Lina was telling uh, telling him that she was going to capture him. I think this is good, uh, especially because like that was that came out of nowhere, so it was just good to call her out on that. And she definitely, you could see that she was shaken by it. So I, I really did appreciate that. And again, that built up into the next moment, which was Tatsuya telling Lina to quit and that she's being too naive. Like, thank you. Exactly, I agree. Tatsuya is saying that I think the narrative fully agrees with that conclusion that was a great moment and we'll talk more about it but you guys know I've been talking about this Lena is not she's not the person that should be commanding any kind of operation it doesn't make sense I'm glad that Tatsuya can see that I'm glad Tatsuya is calling it out because I think he's correct I think everything we've seen in the anime points to that conclusion not everything like sometimes Lena's pretty all right but like the majority of stuff Feels like that points to the right conclusion. So I totally agree. The narrative agrees. Everything agrees. Statement. So I guess in world logic, narrative logic, and viewer, I everything's in agreement. Uh, but before we go into a bigger discussion on that, m my next top moment was Tatsuya derailing the whole operation and feeding Lina enough info to make her think that Tatsuya is an illusionist. I just liked seeing how thoroughly this man messed everything up. And I'm very curious about what's going on, especially when you see that no one's around in the control room at the end. That just makes me feel like someone went through and just swept the US out of Japan. I'm very excited to see the next episode to see what exactly is going on with the empty control room. But in terms of what the guy did, masterful, right? That was masterful. I think that was really cool. Thank God that they had time to put that in there. Let's see. And my last top moment. It's a little bit of a surprise, but it was Miyuki noting that Tatsuya was hurt. Um, I think this is good, you know, it's one thing for Miyuki to be as cringe as she is, uh, but it is legitimately adorable when she can tell that her brother's been hurt. I think that is a legitimate, nice quality that she has. I enjoyed that little moment. I think that was a nice little way to, to end off the episode. Uh, and I do legitimately respect how much she cares for him, right? I can respect that. So. Um, those are my top moments for the episode. I think, again, super solid episode. This is the standard for what every episode of Mahoka should be in terms of the pacing. I don't care about the action. I care about the pacing. I care about coming out of an episode without having any crazy questions um, that are never going to get answered because that's been the problem with the first four episodes. Now, in terms of a discussion about the episode, I really want to focus in on that whole situation with Lena being naive. I'm happy that Tatsuya said it because this is what I've been saying. But now what I have to question is, how blind is the rest of the world to that situation with Lena being naive? How blind is the US? Because to me, it feels like the writing wants to paint the US as incompetent, which if a Japanese author wants to do that, whatever, do it, go for it. Adults are almost always incompetent when it comes to anime and manga. Governments are almost always incompetent. That's not a big deal. But my problems specifically come in when this is this is going on and you have characters treating the situation seriously. And one of my most confusing points for the episode was the whole situation with the job that Lena was being given. So in episode six, I made this note and I'm going to be very careful here because I think I might not be understanding something due to my deficiencies in English. I feel like in that in episode six, when the woman was saying that Lena wasn't doing well at her job and that that, you know, it wasn't all entirely her fault. I was confused in this episode. They come in and they specifically say that, hey, you're going back to the Tatsuya job. And this is where the episode six line makes sense. What I am interpreting here 
is that this woman, when she was saying that Lena is not really well suited for a particular task, she was talking about the pursuing of renegade magicians. And this is where my first question is, because like, because the Tatuya job was off the table. Here's my first question. What do you mean the leader of your unit is not suited for the elimination and the tracking of renegade magicians from your country? What does that mean that she's not suited for that? Yes, she may not have tracking magic, but that's why she has a team with her. That's why she is leading a team. What do you mean she's not suited for that and not suited for elimination? Now, listen, if they wanted to say that Lena's only good as a weapon, like only good as just point her in one direction and sick her on someone, I would agree with that. I would totally agree with that because that, that makes the most sense. The problem here is that you have this woman saying that that's not her strongest field. She's referring specifically to the pursuit of magicians given the context from this episode. Why is she a leader if she can't handle the pursuit and elimination aspect? If you're saying she's weak at that, what is she strong in then? Just direct combat? But if she's only strong in direct combat, again, she, she shouldn't be a leader. And now this leads me to a bigger point. In episode 6, you know, Lena was also saying stuff like, Oh man, I overslept. Or, you know, she was making a joke with uh, Sylvia about oversleeping and all that. And we know that her friend from episode 6 that got removed, we know that this woman was looking out for her and making sure she didn't botch the entire operation, right? Like, when you look at it, it's really funny that this woman is talking about this girl not being well-suited for a particular task. And then, in this episode, you're moving her into the task that she definitely isn't suited for, that being the pursuing of Tatsuya. Unless you'd say that she was being moved into specific apprehension, in which case, yes, I would agree with that point. Um, just It's just... Honestly, the word, the dialogue for the t the task moving was just so vague for me. Regardless, going back to Lena, I don't think she has the judgment of a leader. The moment in episode six where she's t making jokes about oversleeping and seeing the way that she has to be corrected by her assistant, that's not that's not a leader. Um, my question to you guys is: Do you think Tatsuya is someone who oversleeps? I mean, he might be, but do you think he carries that air? Do you think? that's a part of his character no see the thing is lena doesn't really show any kind of sign of military discipline she's pretty cringe when she does try like doing the salute in front of an enemy combatant and all that um but lena doesn't exude the same air of authority that tatsuya does so when he says that she's naive i i agree with him i fully agree with him he seems a lot more military like than lena ever is and again for me you're telling me this girl is the leader of a unit and she's oversleeping. Where's the military discipline? Is America running a loose ship? Maybe that might be what the author wants us to take away, that the America is just incompetent. That could be the author's perspective coming into the story. That's ultimately how I feel about Lena. And when it comes to Lena, there's so much in the story that just tells me that she's not well suited to being a leader because she doesn't have the judgment of a leader. And now what I want to talk about there is specifically why that might be occurring. And in my mind, I think I have a pretty good guess as to why Lena has this kind of depiction in the anime. The reality is, is that Lena is a light novel character. And it's a light novel character aimed at the young adult or maybe teenage audience. The problem is, is because she is a light novel cover girl, there also is now an expectation of in terms of the marketing. The reality is, if you want to market Lena, you need to give her a certain degree of vulnerability in order to endear her to the readers. Because looking at how Lena is presented in the marketing of the novels themselves, it makes sense to me that in a light novel about a high school, you take this person who's apparently high up in the military and you have to make her vulnerable enough that she's cute and adorable and draws in readers. That's what I'm seeing here. This, I think, is the conflict between what you're being told a character is and what the narrative requires a character to be. And for this reason, it's why you see Lena acting like the equivalent of a high school girl. It's why you see Lena making mistakes. It's why you see Lena talking about uh, oversleeping. It's why you see Lena being corrected. It's why you see Lena having uh, weird fashion choices. All these layers of vulnerability are specifically there to win, to make her a marketable character. To make her a light novel cover girl. I think that's what ultimately is going on. When you look at her and you look at Tatsuya, 
if you were if you were to give those two characters to a regular person who doesn't know the context of Mahoka and just give them a very quick depiction, just just show them, just show how those characters react in any kind of scene. Don't give any dialogue. Just do everything by body language. At some point, someone's gonna say that Lena doesn't. She just seems like a regular high school girl, while Tatsuya seems like, well, shit, is he the Terminator or something like that? Um, it's just those little things. They build up in such a way that it creates an overall impression about the characters, and that's what I think is going on with Lena. Because Lena needed to be marketable for the light novel audience, she ultimately doesn't live up to her hype and you know honestly lena's vulnerability for me it really works she's my spirit animal the reason she's my spirit animal is because of her excellent lack of a poker face and her overreactive nature i love seeing lena react to whatever insanity is going on with tatsuya miyuki but i don't think the leader and the leader of such an important unit in the us i don't think they would have that lack of a poker face so that's ultimately how i feel about that whole situation i think this was a really good episode anyway um all that said i think this is still a great episode i think this is still great i still i i, I think lena is still very enjoyable what i'm happiest about is that the author has acknowledged that lena legitimately isn't suited for for the military or at least a character has acknowledged it, that it she isn't suited what i want to see now I, i'm really interested in just seeing how the u.s kind of um internalizes or how they rationalize having lena where she is i would love to see more of that uh but i so i, I really do hope that uh, the writing will continue to deconstruct lena a little bit because i think that would be really cool anyway everyone let me know what you thought down below and until next time i hope you have an absolutely great day